Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, President Kirk, Mr. Watson, Mrs. Watson, Dr. Watson Jr., ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Eckert, thank you first of all for a very kind introduction. I don't know how to comment on it. I, first of all, I hope that I am, and I know for sure, that I'm expressing the same sentiment which everybody who has been involved with thinking about computing machines, using computing machines, expecting to use computing machines, probably feels at this moment. Namely, a sense of an obligation to express our admiration and our felicitation, both to the US Navy and to the IBM Corporation, for having asked for the NORC, for having produced it, for having in common deliberations and decisions set the standards is remarkably high as they were set and for having met those standards and for having brought off this really remarkable achievement. I will say a few things about the importance of North, about what, it, what we hope it will do and what its significance in this development is. To talk about its significance in this development, one first has to visualize what its position in this development is. We have reached a stage where we can use this basic calibration as the achievement of bygone days by which everything is judged, the first large electronic calculators which came into existence in the middle 1940s. Uh, we can by now pass almost without mentioning it over the fact that these represented improvement in speed by factors like hundreds and thousands over the arc which had existed before. Just comparing to the level, to the remarkable level which was then established, the evolution has been very fast. Uh, the first large scale and generally available, and I mean commercially available large electronic calculator of this completely integrated type of IBM, the 701, was already a factor ahead of the first development, which depending on how one measures it may be somewhere between 10 and 100, but probably for which an average figure like 30 is reasonable. Comparing North, this by the way, was only about two years ago. Comparing North to this, again, it's very hard to put a definite number and a single number on comparing two instruments, each of which will be used in very different situations, which will not in general be used in the same situation and so on, but probably again the ratio of improvement is something like a factor of five or perhaps somewhat higher. But a highly differentiated, very complex, very sophisticated uh, organ machine, organ like this, can be improved in less than a decade by a factor like 200. And in hardly two years, by a factor like five, is something remarkable and happens very rarely. Of course, it happens in very new technologies, and this is a new technology, but it's not that new and not that simple. These are very complex uh, uh, objects, and that such achievements are possible is one of the most remarkable things in our experience. As far as uh, this ratio, is probably most simply realized when one talks of speed and it's customary to measure the speed of a computing machine not by enumerating all the partial speeds which enter into it but the one average figure namely uh, its multiplication speed the time in which the north performs a full size multiplication can be expressed in various ways depending on how many of the subordinate operations one counts in but it's something by and large of the order of one twenty thousandth of a second of, uh, this includes already so much more than why this speed is needed and what the problems are which lead to it. Of course, in answering this question by now, one is setting up a straw man in order to knock it over. Most of us have asked this question for years. Most of us have answered it by now to our own satisfaction, so I will not repeat the familiar argument. In speaking of problems which can be solved with North, I will again not mention those which normally come into one's mind, in particular the problems which are immediate in the operation of, of the Bureau of Ordnance, 
and in broader operation of the Navy or of other agencies with my share in the machine. But I will perhaps mention to you a few others which one does not have immediately in mind and the importance of which is also increasing and will probably become very large in the near future. Uh, let me perhaps mention one or two which, uh, with which I'm particularly familiar and where I know how to make rather detailed estimates. Not being a machine with very high speed and with a rather large memory and with a very exceptional capability to ingest and to emit data is clearly suited for problems where large amounts of material have to be processed, therefore where is scientific calculation go. The area which has to be covered by the calculation is large. Uh, largeness in these cases is achieved much more quickly by going into depth, by going into many dimensions, than by going into great extent. And in all problems of, uh, of mechanics, of electricity, of fluid dynamics, problems which really, in which all three dimensions of space play an essential role, three dimensional problems, where in addition changes to time occur, so where one in fact deals with four mathematical dimensions, have been those which were most exigent. If you think of such multi dimensional problems, then the area which comes to one's mind where phenomena are such that one loses the problem by omitting any one of the dimensions of space are those in geophysics, and it is quite instructive what a machine of the type of Mach will do in geophysics. In speaking of geophysics, let me mention the three, three areas to which geophysics applies, one after another, namely the air, water, and earth. Speaking of air in the first place, in other words, the phenomena in the atmosphere, in particularly of uh, dynamic of theoretical meteorology, which is now accessible, which is now and for a number of years has been accessible to extensive calculations. I would like to, uh, it's worthwhile to estimate what North can do by considering typical things like this. We know today that we can predict by calculation the weather over an area like that of the United States for a duration like 24 hours in a manner which from the hydrodynamicist point of view is primitive, because you only consider one level in the atmosphere, the mean motion of the atmosphere in altitude. We know that this is uh, a restrictive result, which are by and large about as good as what an experienced subjective, subjective forecaster will do, which is quite good. Uh, this kind of a calculation from start to finish with not would we take about know that this calculation can be refined a good deal. Uh, you cannot refine it mathematically in infinitum, because once the mathematical precision has reached a certain level, it begins it loses significance because the physical assumptions which end up are no longer that good. In atmospherics, in the simple descriptions of the atmosphere, this level, as we now know, is reached when you deal with approximately three or four levels in the atmosphere. And this is a calculation which Nord would probably do for 24 hours ahead in something of the order of two to four minutes. We know that calculations covering the entire, no which are to make meteorological forecasts for a longer period for periods during which the main circulation or patterns that one is interested in are set up, which are periods like 30, 60 days, that such calculations are probably possible, but that one surely will have to consider areas which are much larger than the United States, because in a duration like 30 days, in fact in much shorter durations, already in a few days, influences from the more remote parts of the globe interact. We also know that interaction between the northern and southern hemisphere is not very strong. Therefore, one can probably limit the calculation in the main to one hemisphere. Such calculations have so far only been done in very tentative and primitive ways. And uh, all those who have worked on these problems have really worked on them so far in a spirit of getting oriented. One serious reason for being going easy about this problem is that with the best available modern computing machines, they are still, still very large problems, and when you deal with a new problem, you must 
resign yourself to solving it first a few dozen times the long way before you gradually find out by trial and error and by coming to grief what a reasonably good way is. Consequently, one will simply not do it unless one can make the individual test rapidly. A calculation of this order or not, well, I would say something of the order of magnitude of 24 hours computing time. Uh, this can be off by factor two or three, one way or another, but that's the order of magnitude of it, which means that it's accessible for research purposes. I would say that in this area, the role of North would probably become essential at about this level. Whether you do a simple 24-hour forecast in half a minute or in 10 minutes is not very important. Whether for a hemispheric calculation you need 24 hours or a month is very important indeed. If it takes a month, you won't do it. If it takes 24 hours, you may spend several months on doing it 20 times, which is what one needs. Mentioning another area, uh, namely calculations relative to, to, to the ocean, I would only mention one thing, which I think now has become possible, for which there has always been a desire before, and which we see with this machinery can be done, which is complete calculations about the tidal motion in the entire oceanic system. Uh, one must consider that this will have to be done in two parts namely first for the large body of the sea, and second for the marginal phenomena which are really interesting, namely what happens near the continent. However, one probably has to make the first calculation which neglects the phenomena close to the continent, which treats the phenomena close to the continent superficially, and then use this as an external boundary condition for the calculations near the, near, near the continent. I will not try to put numbers in hours and days on, on calculations of this type uh, because one has to go into considerable details of evaluation before one can give meaning to such figures. However, uh, there's no question that with a machine like Nox, this is at least for the first time in the area where again the calculation is a matter of days and therefore with all the trials and errors that our ignorance at first attack will cause, it to mention still another area, namely things which relate to the Earth, uh, it has been realized for some time that the hydrodynamics of the liquid core of the Earth are of very great importance, that the state of motion of the liquid core of the Earth is a very complicated motion where mechanical and electromagnetic forces both play a role and where this motion belongs to the very difficult class called turbulent. We know we, it seems extremely likely that this is responsible for the main phenomena of terrestrial magnetism and that it is also f important for a number of other reasons. The calculations are very difficult and can probably only be done in a three-dimensional sense, and the pioneer with efforts which have been made in this field have all tended to show how difficult it is and what extensive numerical problems arise. It is quite typical that this type of problem, again, becomes probably accessible for the first time now. Another category of problems which, with which uh, the so-called experts have been familiar, but which have only been used spotily and which have not been used in vast areas where they are important and they are fast machines, is quite decisive, are statistical experiments on complicated situations. This is very important. It has already been pointed out here before that a fast computing machine makes it possible to calculate the outcome of something which one might do before one has done it. And that this means that you need not make as many experiments, as many tests, as many tries, build as, many, as much equipment as you otherwise would. Because you can exclude 50%, 80%, 90% of what won't work a priori on the basis of calculation. You won't exclude all your tests, but you may exclude a large fraction of them. And the economic and organizational importance of fast computing in this regard is especially in an organization with the problems of the Navy and on. I would like to add that this can be pushed further. There are complicated situ complicated processes which are not exactly mechanical, like large-scale operations involving an organization, involving many, many men, involving many units, combat operations, or much more simply logistical operations that are involved where you can 
stipulating certain assumptions about what you're going to have, stipulating certain choices of parameters, which are really administrative or command decisions that will have to be made later, and about which your mind is not yet made up. Calculate what is going to happen under those conditions. You can even calculate it if these conditions by themselves do not determine the event, because the event also depends on what somebody else will do. For instance, the economy at large in logistics, or the enemy in a military operation. Furthermore, may include things which are just pure accidents, say like the state of the weather during an operation, or some other factor involving, uh, involving ev human events or vulnerabilities and so on, which are statistical. You can, with a certain assumption of parameters, go through a calculation hundred times, each time assuming the accidental parameters differently, and so distributing them that these hundred tries give you the correct statistical pattern. You can in this way evaluate ahead of time the merit of different combinations of those parameters for which decisions will have to be made, and then get oriented how the decisions should be made. This has been done on minor scales and mediums before, but it's a very difficult art which again has remained undeveloped, mainly because each single try takes so much time, is such a high price in terms of equipment and patience, and the penalty for doing it clumsily is so high. Nobody in planning a program, a research program, or in, a, in an investigation, likes to commit himself to a particular plan, which may be scary, if this involves tying up everybody for half a year. If one can do these things rapidly, one will be bolder and one will find out more quickly how to do it. So even finding out how to do these things requires very fast equipment. In addition to it, it can only be done in a routine way and in the absolute manner in which it ought to be done if such equipment is available. Again, here's the importance of machines in the class of law and specifically of law will be quite, will be important. You know. To mention still another area, namely things which relate to the Earth, it has been realized for some time that the hydrodynamics of the liquid core of the Earth are of very great importance, that the state of motion of the liquid core of the Earth is a very complicated motion where mechanical and electromagnetic forces both play a role and where this motion belongs to the very difficult class called turbulent. We know we, it seems extremely likely that this is responsible for the main phenomena of terrestrial magnetism and that this is also f important for a number of other reasons. The calculations are very difficult and can probably only be done in a three-dimensional sense, and the pioneer with efforts which have been made in this field have all tended to show how difficult it is and what extensive numerical problems arise. It is quite typical that this type of problem, again, becomes probably accessible for the first time now. Another category of problems which, with which the so-called experts have been familiar, but which have only been used spotily and which have not been used in vast areas where they are important and they are fast machines, is quite decisive, are statistical experiments on complicated situations. This is very important. It has already been pointed out here before that a fast computing machine makes it possible to calculate the outcome of something which one might do before one has done it. And that this means that you need not make as many experiments, as many tests, as many tries, build as, many equi as much equipment as you otherwise would. Because you can exclude 50%, 80%, 90% of what won't work a priori on the basis of calculation. You won't exclude all your does, but you may exclude a large fraction of them. And the economic and organizational importance of fast computing in this regard is especially in an organization with the problems of the Navy and on. I would like to add that this can be pushed further. There are complicated situ complicated processes which are not exactly mechanical, like large-scale operations involving an organization, involving many, many men, involving many units, combat operations, or much more simply logistical operations that are involved, where you can, stipulating certain assumptions about what you're going to have, stipulating certain choices of uh, parameters, which are really administrative or command decisions that will have to be made later, and about which your mind is not yet made up. 
calculate what is going to happen under those conditions. You can even calculate it if these conditions by themselves do not determine the event, because the event also depends on what somebody else will do. For instance, the economy at large in logistics, or the enemy in a military operation. Furthermore, may include things which are just pure accidents, say like the state of the weather during an operation, or some other factor involving, uh, involving uh, human events or vulnerabilities and so on, which are statistical. You can, with a certain assumption of parameters, go through a calculation hundred times, each time assuming the accidental parameters differently, and so distributing them that these hundred tries give you the correct statistical pattern. You can in this way evaluate ahead of time the merit of different combinations of those parameters on which decisions will have to be made, and then get oriented how the decisions should be made. This has been done on minor scales and mediums before, but it's a very difficult art which again has remained undeveloped mainly because each single try takes so much time, is such a high price in terms of equipment and patience, and the penalty for doing it clumsily is so high. Nobody in planning a program, a research program, or in, a, in an investigation, likes to commit himself to a particular plan, which may be scary, if this involves tying up everybody for half a year. If one can do these things rapidly, one will be bolder and one will find out more quickly how to do it. So even finding out how to do these things requires very fast equipment. In addition to it, it can only be done in a routine way and in the absolute manner in which it ought to be done if such equipment is available. Again, here's the importance of machines in the class of law and specifically of law will be quite, will be important. You know. The same thing goes for various other calculations involved in planning and programming. Those of you who know the catchwords of linear programming, of nonlinear programming, or various other forms of logistic planning will know what I mean, but I think I won't go into these technicalities more in this occasion. In speaking of the importance of North, I would also like to add that while is a great in importance, and I've tried to give some of the well-known reasons for this. A few other things have been achieved by it, which are equally of very great importance. Those of you present who are, who have lived with this field, and who have lived with and suffered with computing machines of various sorts, and know what kind of a regime it is to exist one, I'm sure have appreciated the fact that it appears that this machine has been completely assembled less than two months ago, has been run on problems less than two weeks ago, and yesterday already ran for four hours without making a mistake. I, for those of you who have not been exposed to computing machines and who do not have the visceral feeling which goes with uh, living with their mistakes, will appreciate what it means if a computing machine after about two weeks of breaking in has really a faultless run of four hours. It's completely fantastic on an object of this size. I doubt it has been ever achieved before, and it's an enormous reassurance regarding the state of the art and regarding the complexities to which one will be able to go in the future that it has been achieved. This is a machine of about 9,000 cubes and 20, 25,000 diodes. These numbers are very high, but such numbers have occurred before. But machines of this type in the past took several years to break it. The last thing which is very important is said in fewer words, but I think it's nonetheless important. And this is this. In planning new computing machines and in planning, in fact, in planning anything new, in trying to enlarge the domain of parameters with which one can work, it's of course customary and very proper that one should consider what the demand is, what the price is, whether it will be more profitable to do it in a bold way than in a cautious way, and so on. Uh, this type of consideration is necessary. The world would very quickly go to pieces if these rules were not observed in 99 cases out of 100. It's terribly important that there should, however, be one piece in 100 where it's done differently. And where one uses the definition, which Dr. Havens pointed out half, uh, uh, 20 minutes ago, namely to occasionally do 
what the U.S. Navy did in this case and what IBM accepted in this case. To write a specification essentially to build the most powerful machine which is possible in this state, in the present state of the art. I hope that this will be repeated very soon and will never be forgotten. said in fewer words, but I think it's nonetheless important. And this is this. In planning new computing machines and in planning, in fact, in planning anything new, in trying to enlarge the domain of parameters with which one can work, it's of course customary and very proper that one should consider what the demand is, what the price is, whether it will be more profitable to do it in a bold way than in a cautious way and so on. Uh, this type of consideration is necessary. The world would very quickly go to pieces if these rules were not observed in 99 cases out of 100. It's terribly important that there should, however, be one piece in 100 where it's done differently. And where one uses the definition which Dr. Havens pointed out half, uh, uh, 20 minutes ago, namely to occasionally do what the U.S. Navy did in this case and what IBM accepted in this case. To write a specification essentially to build the most powerful machine which is possible in this state, in the present state of the art. I hope that this will be repeated very soon and will never be forgotten.